alkalinity. I want to keep this very simple for you. Total alkalinity is the amount of sodium bicarbonate in your water, expressed in parts per million. The proper range for total alkalinity is between 80 and 120. To raise alkalinity in your pool water, you need to add sodium bicarbonate. If you were to get too much alkalinity in your water, you need to use muriatic acid to lower it. When we balance alkalinity, we want to shoot for the higher end of the range. So if you test your alkalinity and it's 40, we want to get up to between 100 and 120. So let's just say 110. So if your alkalinity tests at 40 parts per million, you need to add 70 parts per million to get it into a proper range. Why do we want to shoot for the higher end of the range? Well, to raise alkalinity, we use sodium bicarbonate, but to lower it, we use muriatic acid. Muriatic acid lowers alkalinity. If you remember, muriatic acid is also what you'll be using regularly to lower your pool's pH. So, as you go through week to week lowering your pH, you will slowly lower your alkalinity level. So if you only balance your alkalinity to 80, you're gonna constantly have a level of alkalinity that's too low. But if you balance out to 110, 120, then that's going to give you a longer time window of having your alkalinity balanced properly. What is alkalinity and why is it important? Well, you need to keep a proper level of alkalinity to help buffer or guard your pH from all the crazy different chemicals that are being added to your pool. Chlorine tabs have a low pH, anywhere from 3 to 4. Chlorine shock, calcium hypochlorite, has a high pH in between 8.5 and 11. Tap water typically has a pH ranging from 8 to 8.5, so as you refill evaporated water, you're adding water that has a higher pH than what your pool should be at. So all these different chemicals with different pHs are constantly being added to your water and would normally have a very chaotic effect on your pool's pH. This is where alkalinity comes in. Alkalinity keeps your pH in check. So instead of it going from 7.2 to 9, down to 3, back to 6, up to 10, it's going to it's going to stay in a healthy range of 7.2 up to 7.6 and then to 8. So, without enough alkalinity, your pH bounces out of control. If you get too much alkalinity, the opposite happens. Your pH locks, but it locks up at a high level because alkalinity is a base. So if you get too much alkalinity, if you add too much sodium bicarbonate and it goes above 120 parts per million, your pH goes into what's called pH lock. It's where it goes up to about 8.5 to 9 and it won't move. It requires enormous amounts of muriatic acid to burn out higher levels of alkalinity. You should test your alkalinity once per week. Let's check out this video on using a Taylor K2005 test kit to test for alkalinity. Total alkalinity is the green bottles. Before we begin testing alkalinity, we need to empty out the comparator and rinse it. You can do this into your pool. It's not going to hurt anything for the pool to oxidize off the reagents. So go ahead, dump that old water out into the pool, give it a good rinse, and then take your water sample and fill the large compartment up to the 25 milliliter mark. The process for testing alkalinity is called titration and it's a little bit different than just adding in a few drops and comparing a color. We're going to have to add some drops and wait until one color of our water changes to another. Titration is how we figure out both total alkalinity and calcium hardness. So pay close attention to how this works because it's a little bit tricky. Like I said, the first thing we need to do, fill the large compartment up to the 25 milliliter mark. Alkalinity test is the green bottles. Take the first green bottle, R0007. It's called thiosulfate. Take the R0007 and add two drops into that 25 milliliter water sample. Now, take the next green bottle, which is R0008. It's called alkalinity indicator. We need to do five drops of R0008 into that 25 milliliter water sample. Now what I do to get my alkalinity reading is I take the last green bottle, R0009, sulfuric acid. And I'm going to do it slowly, one drop at a time, while I'm swirling my sample. And I'm trying to find out how many drops of the R0009 it takes to turn this green water into a solid pink color. So let's pretend it took six drops for me to change that green to pink. 
I take the number of drops that it took, multiply that by 10, and that's my alkalinity reading. In this case, my alkalinity reading would be 60 parts per million. Now that I know that, I can figure out how much sodium bicarbonate I need to add to increase my alkalinity back into proper range. So, proper range for alkalinity is anywhere between 80 and 120 parts per million. Preferably, we want to go between 110 and 120 parts per million. So I'm going to add about 50 parts per million alkalinity to my water in order to increase it from 60 to 110. The treatment table for figuring out how to increase your alkalinity using sodium bicarbonate is on page 59. The way this treatment table works is you take in parts per million the amount of alkalinity you need to add and then find the gallons of your pool. So, my pool is 10,000 gallons, my alkalinity reading was 60. I need to get to 110, which means I need to add 50 parts per million alkalinity. So, 50 parts per million, 10,000 gallons of water, tells me I need to add 7 pounds of sodium bicarbonate in order to bring my alkalinity back into range. Now that I know I need to add 7 pounds of sodium bicarbonate, I simply go get the proper amount and broadcast that over the surface of my pool. Total alkalinity should be tested once a week and adjusted as necessary. If you do things right, total alkalinity should remain in range for about four to six weeks before you have to readjust. Under special circumstances like heavy rains and heavy use though, you may have to adjust alkalinity at a more frequent basis. Okay, so we're done with alkalinity. Go ahead, dump that sample back into the pool and rinse the comparator out. Now we're gonna test calcium heart. So, we want to keep our alkalinity in between 80 and 120 parts per million. So if alkalinity is too low, we need to add sodium bicarbonate to get it back up. If we add too much sodium bicarbonate, we need to use muriatic acid to correct that. This concludes the section on alkalinity. To continue with chemistry school, please see the video for calcium hardness. Thank you for choosing RiverbendPoolSupply.com for all your pool needs.